All right, hey everybody, we're back for a poll discussion. This week's poll that I put up on Thursday, uh, which is about four days ago now, um, three, four days ago, is uh, the following. It's about the upcoming uh, live action uh, Star Wars uh, shows coming up on Disney+. Plus. So the question was, which of the upcoming Disney Plus Star Wars shows are you most excited about? And the choices were Ahsoka, coming in August 2023, basically just in a few weeks. Skeleton Crew, also fall of 2023. We've got The Acolyte in 2024, and or Season 2 in August of 2024, and The Bad Batch Season 3 also in 2024. And of course, all of these dates are contingent on the writers and actor strikes. Which, which may push uh, everything back. So um, going into this, uh, I knew what my vote was going to be, although I was torn between a few of them. Uh, but I ended up voting for Ahsoka. And Ahsoka uh, currently, after 134 votes, has the lead, a uh, fairly resounding lead at 68%. Coming in wow. at second is Andor Season <laughs> 2 with 22%. Uh, then it's a distant third, uh, The Bad Batch, season three is 5%, The Acolyte at 4%, and Skeleton Crew at a measly 1%. <laughs> and that just barely got some votes, apparently, because I know up until just last night, it had 0%. Oh. So I find that that interesting. What? Uh, where did your uh, vote fall, Greedo? Uh, I voted for uh, Andor season two. Okay because um <clears throat> i am excited to see ahsoka and everything but uh the potential and all that of indoor season two I, I where it ended off and everything i just want to see what they do next with those characters and what cool situations and speeches and, and dialogue yeah. they come up with and scenarios and um unfortunately it's been shut down because of all the strikes but mm -hmm. um so who knows how it will come out, but uh, and with the talk of everything, whether it will come out, um, or whether they'll narrow it to like a movie or four episodes mm -hmm. or something, yeah. But um, it's it's a toss up, you know. I also want to see Ahsoka, but um, um, I feel like that story so far, I may or may not be like the target audience for that. Okay. So I have to see it to know. Mm -hmm. Um because um I wasn't as impressed with Rebels as a lot of other people. Yeah, so same here. It's... I'm not as excited about all the different Rebels characters in live action is right. Uh, I always thought of Rebels as just an almost an alternate universe optional story, you know. Mm -hmm. Just you know, Disney channel for kids thing that they did. And of course it went into more than that, but it did have some great episodes. That made me rethink that, but right, I sort of feel like the story they've left untold. I never really got into the idea of Thrawn being involved in the Rebel storyline, um, and so the story that they left the cliffhanger on of what's going to happen next isn't all that compelling to me. So it is, but it's not you know crazy compelling. Sure, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, for for me, it's somewhat of the same. Uh, I you know. I've talked about my history with Rebels on this in the past, and I I didn't watch Rebel. I watched the first season of Rebels when it aired, but I watched it from a very bitter, <laughs> um, angry standpoint because I'm like, wait, they canceled Clone Wars for this, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and I was not happy with it. And to the point that I watched season one, I was like, I'm good, you know, and I didn't watch any of the rest of it for probably until around I think the the show had its run. It's it's I guess four season run. And then I went back and rewatched it and ended up liking it a lot better uh, upon the rewatch. Um, so I definitely have a much bigger respect for it now than I did several years ago when it first premiered. And yeah, I'm, I'm not really hung up on watching the live action character. Yeah, I'm not. That's not the big draw factor for me is like, oh, I got to see the, all these characters from Rebels in live action. Yeah, that really doesn't mean that much to me. Um it's more the Ahsoka continuation of her storyline. Yeah, it's more Thrawn of a continuation of Ahsoka's story and seeing Thrawn live uh, in yeah. live action. That those are the two most compelling aspects of this story for me, and just how they're going to tie it into the whole Mando verse as a whole, uh, and if they mm -hmm. are going to ultimately, you know, bring this to a head with uh, Dave Filoni's film, if that ever gets made, you know, if, if we end up going that route. Yeah, um, I, I will say if we didn't have if we didn't have the sequel trilogy as a knowing kind of already what's going to happen. 
to a large degree in the galaxy into some of the main characters and stuff already out there. If that wasn't out there, I think I'd be a lot more excited for Ahsoka because it is a it's a thrust towards the main storyline of what happens after Return of the Jedi, which is I'm very interested in or I was until the sequels kind of took the wind out of the sails for me on that. So knowing that we're, that's going to be our end point mm-hmm. takes some of the excitement out of me there. Whereas if that was more open ended or if we had a longer period of time or something, just more to explore. Yeah. Um, because, you know, what, what are the selling points you can pull out of that? It's like, how did the first order do this or that? You know, at this point, I'm not really that invested in how the first order did anything. So yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> just doesn't excite me. So, uh, um, it just seems kind of like filler or just more like background information to try to justify things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I still, uh, I love the character. Um, I love during the Mandalorian and I do want to see what happens with bringing Thrawn into live action. I think there's a lot riding on it, like I've said before, and I am rooting for it. I'm no way rooting against it. Just being a little less excited about it than I should be. Doesn't mean anything, you know, it's not, yeah, I'm not against here. the show. It's not like we yeah. wanted to fail. We just were no. personally invested that much in it. So yeah, yeah, it's what we've got right now. So yeah. right. Um, they may be, who knows? They may be thinking about changes mm-hmm. at Lucasfilm. They seem to always promote the wrong messaging um, as as far as what they're learning. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. well, some of our stuff isn't doing as well as we'd like. Therefore, uh, Star Wars is bad. <laughs> you know, right, people are people are burnt out on people yeah. are burnt out on Star Wars. Yeah, yeah uh, no, <laughs> nobody, not many people are burnt. They're just burnt out on what you guys have given them to a certain degree. You know, right. it's like and you have to do better. Yeah, yeah, you you got to look at the failure. You got to look in the mirror when you fail at something. And exactly, um, you know, unless it's going to be recognized, rediscovered later as a secret act of genius, you have to say where can we improve to reach more people and to um and it begins with your core base you know just like anything else you, you have a base of followers you have a core you've you've got to get right with them and decide what you're going to do with them and what you're going to give mm-hmm. them and then figure out how to expand that and nobody's trying to shrink that all the time you know appeal to less people <laughs> so uh <laughs> especially not Iger, i don't think but um yeah i'd be a little more encouraged if they were like you know what we're recommitting to doing better yeah, yeah, we're not going to necessarily do less. We're we're listening to the fans, and um, we're not just going to give you a clunky fan service. We're going to we're going to work. Go back to the drawing board and work on our scripts and our stories. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. Oh. All the other stuff will be there. All the great designs will be there. They've got talented artists. Artists and designers have never let Star Wars down. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't believe. No, so I, I agree. It's always I agree. been the the content. It's itself. been a content issue, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about some of the ones that didn't get as many votes. Um, we've got we talked a little bit about Andor season two, but so the the three single digit <laughs> responses we've got back right. in season three. Um, that you know, yeah, I don't know. I think after the bad taste season two left in my mouth, that I'm not near as interested in season three as I was looking mm. forward to season two after season one. You know, season one was great. Season two was just at at times a complete train wreck for me, um, right? And then it, I it suspect had, had to, with, with with some highlights, and that's it. Yeah, I suspect you're in the minority on that, though. I think just I from am what too. I've, I I've I read too. on the internet and from mm-hmm. fans who are fans of the show, um, which let's face it, haters probably aren't watching the show. Mm-hmm. They're just taking their initial argument of oh, more animated Star Wars that sucks. Exactly. Just, they don't probably don't even know what's going on on it. But the people that watch the show, it seems like liked it a lot. Season two a lot better than you did overall. Yeah. No, I, 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 get that I know. Too. I know. If you edited it down, you you and I both would have liked. We loved. We loved the episodes. We loved mm-hmm. the ones we didn't love. We didn't love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the way you got to look at that. It would have made a kick ass shorter miniseries than what right. it was. Right. Exactly. Just cut it. Yeah. Cut it and make the it others should like have been two-hour movie with the episodes on, online or something. If you yeah. want to go watch um, her learning how to skate, you know, you can do that on Disney Plus uh, online. Right. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, I this poll, the way this poll is constructed, is what are you most looking forward to? So I think I think plenty of people are looking forward to Bad Batch, but the mm-hmm. Ahsoka is the thing on everybody's mind right yeah, now. Yeah, that's the it's next no surprise to me. Thing. It wins. Yeah. yeah. I'm I am sort of surprised that the backswell for Andor hasn't 
increased more mm-hmm. a little bit. Of, uh, I just feel like it's so good, you know, that, um, that, uh, but they're different. They're kind of different things. It's a, it's a, it's a different style of star Wars. So, yeah, no, uh, it, it definitely is. It's, it, it yeah. seems to be a bit polarizing in that it's, it's and you're not going to get lightsabers in Jedi. There. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Which is, which is a nice change of pace, honestly. Yeah. You know, like but you, you know, you are a long song. time. You'd love to have some star Wars where there's none of that, you know, and now you've got yeah. it and or so. Yeah. Um, okay. So the acolyte is only 4%. Any, any take on why, uh, why you think that might be? Um, do we talk about that kind of stuff on this channel? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm right there with you. I, think that's the exactly I mean, don't we reason. all know why no one's excited for that show <laughs> yeah. or seems to be? I mean, I'm sure there's people excited for it. Sure. They were, yeah. they were I, clapping, I they they were clapping like train seals at Celebration. <laughs> you yeah. know, like they always do. Yeah. So, uh, but I don't think we need to go into a big discussion, but I will say I might be in the minority again or the for my age and everything um i'm sort of looking forward to it uh it yeah, would be I'm my too. it would be my second or third choice um mm-hmm. ahsoka is kind of a given ahsoka i feel like is done like there's no uh since they the thing that worries me is um ray stevenson's passing and right. how that's good because i've seen quotes from him that made it sound like he's going to be a recurring character right like he had a future after this mm-hmm. which uh, makes me wonder whether they'll address that either recasting or they're going to have to or just write him out yeah. yeah and i would i i love the actor and i would love to have seen whatever too. they give me I, if he comes across good at all i would love to have seen more um so that worries me but i feel like ahsoka hasn't been affected by the strikes probably it was probably finished uh, but i don't know that for a fact mm-hmm. um we haven't heard anything about them pushing it back so i'm assuming enough of the stuff was done where they don't need more reshoots they don't need more writing um, you know, to do reshoots. So, uh, so I kind of just like, I know it's coming. Um, so I, I kind of just putting it on hold until I see it. Yeah. Um, my anticipation is kind of just waiting. It's right around the corner. I'm not getting excited for it because if I, if I watch it and it blows me away, I want to be excited by what I'm seeing, not by the anticipation because right. Star Wars has a iffy history on paying off on the anticipation. But uh, but the accolade, I'm I, the concept. I keep going back to the concept. I love the concept. Yeah, uh, exactly which is only a couple one. of sentences that I know. Yeah, but it's Just seeing something from a dark side point of view. I, I yes, think is, is it's unique. Now, will they do that though? <laughs> That's what we don't know. But the main yeah. character apparently is you know someone who was brought up as a as as the title character the acolyte which is a dark you know mm-hmm. dark sith figure you know so i'm not sure how they're going to get around that so no they've uh it goes against established canon mm-hmm. to have sith running around visibly where people would know what they are and everything yeah. so they're going to have to handle it carefully but um but i'm not the Star Wars universe is vast and if they could write a story in a corner of the universe that the Jedi didn't even know what happened. You know what I mean? Like if the Sith are so good at covering their tracks, they could have an adventure or whatever, be mm-hmm. exposed and then cover it up, you know, uh, right. and um, sh- shoot, who knows? Even a Jedi master at the time, who's all about peace may even make a deal with them sure. and say, go about your business. You haven't been harming anyone. It's, yeah, it's just, true. if I see you again, you're dead. But right now it's in the better for the betterment of the galaxy, so we don't have another Sith Jedi war. Get out of my, you know, just right. disappear. You live and let live. You know what I mean? They could right. have somebody in charge of the council at the time like that. But anyway, uh, there's there's ways around it. But I'm looking forward to some evil. Uh, and I and I, I've always said I'd love to know the Sith perspective and the dark side perspective on why you would want to pursue this discipline mm-hmm. and what are the steps and um. How do they see philosophically? How do they justify themselves? Right. Um, because the movies tend to break it down to just commit this final evil act and you'll be powerful. You know, murder enough people and you'll be powerful. It's like a it, it becomes like a murder cult. Like the more yeah, you kill, really the more does. strength you get. Whereas if you break it down to what they're saying, they never say kill people. You know, when they're training someone, they never right. say come to the dark side and kill people. It'll be great. Once they get you on the dark side, they say, "Well, keep killing these people, and it'll be great." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so I want to know what's attractive about it. What What are the steps in the power? What's the training that they went into a little bit in Clone Wars, and they haven't? I don't remember it being touched on anywhere else, um, except maybe in some of the comics or 
our media that's not official anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to see that. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to the acolyte from that perspective, but I know, you know, all the things we're not talking about are out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, it, and I think that's for really me. it. Just may not be for a lot me. of people's views on on going forward with this show. Yeah, it might be for teenagers. It might be for people with a completely different worldview and mindset than me, and it just right. may not. Um, but but all I know is um, I'll just use the word woke. Okay, mm-hmm. I've watched plenty of woke series and plenty of woke content and mm-hmm. been just fine with it. Mm-hmm. So it be something being woke doesn't matter that much to me. It just gets predictable, just like anything else. Anything right. that is over done over and over and over again. That's the definition of predictable, right? So mm-hmm. when I turn on something and I see yet another, you know, something, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's woke or not, anything predictable, you start with a little bit off balance. Like, okay, now you got to earn me back. You got to win me over. Yeah. Because your premise is tired. Your premise yeah. is tired at this point. Right. And so I, when I hear the woke stuff, it sounds tired to me. It does. It Literally, doesn't sound new. Yeah, it doesn't sound much. new anymore. Very it doesn't much. sound new anymore at all. I've seen I, it. I think one they keep saying this is the first thing to do this, first thing to do that. No, we've seen it a hundred times, you know, yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> and I think something we we have to take into consideration here too is that I think the demographic of this channel in particular, the people who subscribe to our channel, people who do watch the show, are probably closer to our age. You know, sure. So yeah. that may re- that's going to reflect in these poll results, you know, as well. I think the people that are in our you know, that come from the original trilogy, that come from a longer history of of loving Star Wars, being there when it originally came out and all that are going to be more prone to like some of the live action like Andor and 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 Ahsoka versus some of the animated and the Acolyte and Skeleton Crew and all mm-hmm. that. Because the last one we haven't talked about yet is Skeleton Crew at 1%, you know, literally came up just, just now came up from 0%. I, I find that not not definitely not shocking because I I don't know what it's about other than you know the tagline they keep saying you know oh it's like Goonies in space it's like Goonies in Star Wars and that doesn't make me want to watch it anymore you know no <laughs> to hear that but if you're so, a family person you want to watch something with your kids right um, you know and it sounds out. different it's different right. than the other premises mm-hmm. uh, also there's some talented people involved in it. Oh yeah, you know, John Favreau, Filoni are both oh, been sure. involved in it, oh, and, yeah. and other names. Um, yeah. uh, Dude Law is the main guy, you know. So that's, yeah, that's a lot of talent. Yeah, but if we were in the, if you and I were in the boardroom, mm-hmm. and they're passing around a list of these are these are ideas we're kicking around. The skeleton crew wouldn't get approved by us. No, so you know, we, it would be the one we put near the top of the list. If they said pick three of these to develop. Mm-hmm. I'd pick the acolyte, so okay, and Andor, you know. That's a, yeah, that's the three I would pick too. Yeah, so yeah, okay. probably. Although Bad Batch is is a great thing and everything. Uh, it is. I, uh, it is. Yeah, it would be. It might be in there too, but but uh, um, I'm just saying, you know, when it's pitched for a certain mm-hmm. demographic, and we're not that. Yeah, it's no wonder that you know because we're not. We don't come at it from perspective of oh, we're going to make a lot of money off this. Yeah, we're yeah. the consumer. <laughs> we want to enjoy it. You know, right? Um, we're not. We don't have any back end on it, so. Um, and I think a lot of us that are our age group still feel like there's quality left in Star Wars, the Star Wars we knew. Yeah, we, I, we, so I agree. Yeah. yeah, we feel like there's stuff undone and there's there's good stuff to mine there. Doesn't mean you have to revisit the original trilogy every single time and you can't ever escape it. Right. But it means that those ideas, those concepts, the heart of it still have something to offer. Mm -hmm. Um, And we went through waiting two and a half years, three years between three films. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. Then there was a lot of just extra stuff. I I don't understand why people don't get our perspective that we still feel like there's more. I I felt like there was more when I walked out of the theater after seeing Return of the Jedi. Oh, I do too. Yeah. I don't know about that. So um, it shouldn't be a surprise that, the sequels didn't quite satisfy us. It didn't quite give us enough of what, after that long of a wait, mm-hmm. of what we feel is still there worthwhile to mine. And the missteps may have wasted valuable time and resources going in iffy directions, you know, where if you had stuck to the core of what is great about Star Wars, you could have done some great things. And so it's still hanging out there, that what if and everything. Yep. So the more they try to develop things like High Republic and everything like that, I, I hope they find an audience for it. Right. Um, 
But maybe the most we're ever going to get is that hallway scene with Luke from the Mandalorian, you know, saying, yeah. here's a glimpse of what could have been. Yeah. Um, and the Mandalorian itself is kind of a glimpse of what could have been and the, the mm-hmm. show itself it, at its, when it's at its best, you know? Yeah. But uh, um, yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know, I guess fairly predictable poll results this week uh, with Ahsoka being the next thing that's going to happen just in a few weeks, basically uh, less than a month. Uh, that's going to be, have its two episode premiere. So I kind of expected that to be number one, because that's the one that currently everyone's most excited about um, and, or, again you know has a has a big following and uh and we're about a year out from that hopefully depending on again these strikes but uh i was just kind of surprised and according to, to our other poll thrawn mm-hmm. is the most is the character most people are looking forward to seeing the most right correct was yeah. it thrawn was yeah, yeah, yeah. He, thrawn? he came in at a resounding 71 percent lead on that poll yeah you know, over yeah. ezra hera and sabine yeah yeah so it shows you uh, there's people wanting an overall direction yeah for star wars they want to see um they enjoy the mandalorians day-to-day adventures in different parts of the galaxy following a bounty hunter and and when the interarching stories come in that's fine but we also want to see something bigger starting mm-hmm. to develop and we need villains for that we need people to push against you know for yeah. the heroes the, push the thing against. that you've we been need... uh, mm-hmm. talking about for for a long time on this show is yeah we just don't have that solid villain in star wars anymore it doesn't seem like you know we just we no. really come up short in that area so hopefully thrawn will bring a little bit of that back that would be nice yeah agreed um, well uh anyway well uh thanks for uh for taking part in our poll if you voted and uh we will be uh i'll be putting up another poll hopefully in the next couple of days and uh we'll get you know you what you need we need week. a uh, we need a jurassic park poll of some kind Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah since yeah. we got the anniversary in our episode about that, we need to right, right, absolutely. Yeah, some kind of poll that involves either the Jurassic World sequels or something to do with the the original. But yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure there's got to be fans of the Jurassic World series out there, mm. <laughs> right? I, I like the movies, but yeah, yeah, I'm not, they, so, they they pale compared to the originals. You know? yeah, yeah, or at least the original, I should say. <laughs> so. <laughs> But uh, anyway, but yeah, so uh, so thanks for uh, for uh, taking part in the poll and uh, watching the show. And uh, please click like and subscribe and talk to us in the comments and we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Hi there, this is Mike Quinn and I play Nine Num in the Star Wars movies. And I want to say hi to the Cantina Club. Yeah, may the boss be with you. Just one?